So before we can start using Apple Loops in GarageBand, I think it's probably important to understand what is an Apple Loop. Before we talk about an Apple Loop specifically, let's learn a little bit more about loops. A loop can be a short rhythmic or musical phrase that is of an exact bar length. It could be four bars or an eight bar or even a 16 bar pattern. Typically, the tempo doesn't change during the course of that loop. And if you place a lot of these loops back to back in a digital audio workstation like GarageBand, you get a consistent rhythmic pattern happening. Now an Apple loop is Apple's own format of loops. And there's two different types of Apple loops. There's real instrument loops or audio loops and software instrument loops. Real instrument loops are typically an audio recording of either an acoustic instrument or something that's fairly heavily processed. Maybe it's an electric guitar or a distorted drum kit. And software instrument loops are loops that are comprised of MIDI data as opposed to the audio data found in more traditional types of loops. The advantage to the MIDI loop is that you can get in and alter the musical note data like you can with a MIDI file. You can change the note, change the length, change the velocity, take out one note out of a chord, and do all sorts of stuff that you can't do with audio loops. And GarageBand ships with a whole bunch of Apple loops. And it's really easy, if you're not as musically inclined as you'd like to be, to create a very convincing musical arrangement just using Apple loops.